So let's break this down a little bit more with Pennsylvania Congressman Guy Reschenthaler, who was one of the many people blocked from sharing the story on Twitter. Congressman, welcome back. Sean, thanks for having me back on. I appreciate it. And yeah, I was I was blocked uh, by the social media oligarchs, the big tech tyrants from sharing this. And my own social media team thinks that I've been throttled back, meaning that my uh, my tweets, my Facebook posts are not having the reach they used to have. So this is a problem. You referenced the Washington Post saying democracy dies in the dark. Well, right here, we have democracy dying in the dark when you have this kind of censorship going on. Yeah, I mean, seriously, though, they, they change their headline to democracy dies in darkness. And then they tell people, don't look at the oldest contiguous publication in America founded by Alexander Hamilton because it's against Joe Biden. I cannot believe that I've spent years listening to this press corps preach about transparency, standing up for the First Amendment, fighting hard, and yet they cower like little dogs when someone prints a story and here's the thing, Congressman, the story is based on, on uh, pictures and emails that are out there, and no one's denying them. So it's, it's a question of, and they say, well, it's been hacked. Well, no, according to Delaware law, that Apple computer was left to the owner of that store where it was not, we're at the repair shop. That's hacked. What's, I mean, that's not hacked. That's exactly. given. What's really hacked is when the New York Times takes the president's tax returns and says, hey, we're going to put them out there, which is illegal, and then we have no problem with that. Right. Well, that's just one piece of hypocrisy, but we have two other pieces of hypocrisy. You know, the Steele dossier, which the FBI has shown has been completely fraudulent, that has been debunked. Yet we can still uh, link to that. The left is sending that all over social media, and that hasn't been taken down. Yet this New York Post article has been that's been corroborated. Additionally, and this might get a little bit too legalistic, but just bear with me, these big tech companies have the privilege of immunity under Section 230, meaning they're being treated as platforms for liability purposes. Yet the New York Post is being treated as a publisher. So they have all the liability exposure. Yet big tech is applying a different standard when they face no liability. So it's this weird, uh, it's this weird hypocrisy in the law. And clearly, we've seen where big tech loyalties are. They're trying to throw this election to Joe Biden. So uh, Jack Dorsey, who's the head of Twitter, sent out this lame response. I got to show it to you because you're right. You sent out a tweet explaining it and they block you. This is what Jack says. Our communication around the action of the New York Post article was not great. And blocking URL sharing via tweet or DM direct message with zero context as to why we're blocking unacceptable. Guess what, Jack? You're right. But you're not going to do anything about it. So, Congressman, you're elected. Will you do something about it? I'm tired of conservatives talking about Section 230 and not doing it. What can we do to stop this? There's a lot of things we can do. First off, we need to change Section 230 to take this liability protection away from these, from these publishers. They're no longer platforms. That's just the start. The other thing that we should do is consider treating these big tech giants as public utilities and regulating them as such. Now, I don't like regulation. I'm a Republican. But these businesses are more acting more like public utilities rather than, than platforms. That's another thing we can do. We should also look at breaking them up. When you have Google that controls 90 percent of all Internet searches, they clearly are too big. And the startup companies, they all say, well, there's all these startup companies. Well, the goal of the startup companies is to be purchased by one of these big tech giants. So the system needs, needs to be changed. We need to go back to the days of Teddy Roosevelt, who took out Standard, Standard Oil and the railroad companies. These companies are so big, they're crushing competition, and they're now threatening democracy and discord. And, and Sean, I should say this, too. There's a problem with the anonymity on these platforms. You know, I've got a blue check mark, you have a blue check mark. Everybody should be verified. So that's something that we can put on big tech to require them to verify. And that way we can go after individuals for liable and slander and false light and the, these other torts for putting this contact, con, content up. Additionally, maybe we should adopt the European view of our data where the user owns his or her own data, not the big tech company. So that's just, that's just a few things that I want to take a look at. Andy Biggs has a great bill on this, but the time has come to rein in the big tech oligarchs and the big tech 
uh, overlords. They've clearly overstepped here. So just to be clear, I want to get you on the record on this because you, you clearly got the, the legal Navy JAG background. You are you are against little kitty 342 being able to just tweet without a verified check mark. Yes or no, Congressman? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> little kitty, three, two, one. Your days are numbered, my friend. Uh, let me pivot for a second. I had the honor of being in Lebanon County last night to talk to my, about my book to some folks uh, in your state. I went in a little nervous about Pennsylvania. I came out a lot better. The current polls show the president trailing there a little, 45, 47. But I'll tell you, the folks that I talked to in Lebanon County were out registering new voters. I felt really good coming back from Pennsylvania last night. Do you think your part of the state is in the same in the same place as where I was I do Sean there's energy here in western Pennsylvania and a lot of it comes to the fact that Joe Biden is viewed as China Joe the voters here are smart enough to know that Joe is in the bag for the Chinese Communist Party and vice versa also there's the issue of fracking it's insulting to the intelligence of my constituents for Biden and Harris to do a 180 on fracking I'll tell you you ban fracking you put a moratorium on it it kills at least 600,000 jobs, um, 600,000 jobs right off the bat, and that's weighing in the minds of voters. And just as far as polling goes, these models, these projections are faulty because there's undersampling of Republicans or undersampling of some demographics. So if Trump is down 2% in the polls, I think he's really up by 4%. I think he's going to shock a lot of people come November 3rd. Now, just a quick caveat, Sean, I am worried about uh, mail-in voter I fraud. Agree. That's going on. And so my my prediction is Trump wins on the evening of the third. We wake up on the fourth with a Trump victory and then it turns into a legal battle as mysterious, mysterious boxes of ballots are found and the Democrats reverse engineer the election. 100 percent. That's exactly how I see this thing going. He's going to win on election night. He needs to be up by about 125 to 150,000 yeah. votes. And then the Democrats are going to find a ton of trash cans with ballots in them. I will take you up on one point. I don't think they've done a 180 on fracking. I think they've done a 720. They're against it. They're for it. They're against it. They're for it. They're for phasing it out. They're for every direction. So, you know, just to be clear that you, no matter who you are, they'll give you a position on fracking that they're that will Fair satisfy point. it. Fair point. Anyway, Congressman, thank you. I look to have you back soon. We can check in on how we're doing in Pennsylvania. Thank you, Sean. Anytime. I appreciate it.